Hello guys and welcome back to yet another AMC video. Today, I'd like to discuss how the SEC has officially begun charging short sellers. They have just charged their first illegal short seller with synthetic shorting offenses, and it is likely that they will continue to do so. So stay tuned and let's make some money immediately and arrive with the essential information. So the SEC tweeted, We charged Investment Advisor Savvy Management LLC and its managing partner Howe de Mintz with fraud in connection with a long-running scheme involving misrepresentations and violation of rules for short selling and order making and other violative trading, alleging that Savvy and Mintz attempted to game the system and make an illegal profit. When an individual employs naked shorts or other manipulative methods to defraud the market and investors, the SEC will guarantee their accountability. Now, I'd like to read this entire press release because it goes into great detail about the crimes committed by Savvy Management, how they committed those crimes, how they concealed or attempted to hide those crimes from the SEC, and how the SEC caught them. So the SEC complaint alleges that between at least March 2017 and May 2019, Savvy and Mintz repeatedly circumvented trading rules to conduct illegal transactions in at least 10 public companies' stocks. Now, this is intriguing because they are not simply shorting a single company. According to the complaint, they are synthetically shorting at least 10, possibly including AMC, MELP, and a number of others. Sabi and Mintz, for instance, engaged in unlawful naked short selling by placing short sales with the knowledge or reckless ignorance that they had not borrowed or located the shares, and then failing to make timely delivery of those shares. Now, this is intriguing because the SEC has not only pursued these short sellers for synthetically shorting shares, but also for recklessly failing to realize that they had not previously borrowed the shares. This essentially means that short sellers cannot use ignorance as a justification for not borrowing shares prior to short selling. The SEC will continue to pursue short sellers. In addition, the complaint alleges that on occasion Savvy and Mintz used naked short selling to artificially deflate the price of securities, allowing them to acquire more shares at a lower cost, e. ladder attacking companies in the exact same way that AMC has been ladder attacked over the past two years. Yes, he acknowledges that the complaint alleges Savvy and Mintz attempted to conceal their fraudulent trading including by using securities acquired after the trades to make it appear to brokers executing those trades that they had complied with the requirements to have borrowed or located the shares prior to their trades. When questioned by at least one broker regarding their investments, Sebi and Mintz repeatedly lied about the trading. So again, the SEC can learn about this synthetic shorting, even if these synthetic short sales have been concealed. The SEC asserts that Sebi and Mintz attempted to manipulate the system for unlawful gain. When an individual employs naked shorts or other manipulative methods to defraud the market and investors, the SEC will guarantee their accountability. Again, this suggests that the SEC will pursue additional short sellers who attempt to manipulate the market. John Tweed's assertion that these men were genuinely influential suggests that perhaps, just possibly, the tide is turning. He stated that there is a long way to go because so many hedge funds do it. He stated that they fail to provide a warranty in every transaction and force businesses into bankruptcy or worse financing arrangements. He stated that a warranty is neither a loan nor an actual safeguard. However, this practice is permitted by these prime brokers and must cease. Therefore, it is evident that Savvy and Mintz was shorting MELP, and if they were shorting both of these companies, it is probable that they were also shorting AMC. The most intriguing aspect of this is the SEC's admission in 2023 that synthetic shorting does exist in the markets today. It is not something from the 1990s that no longer occurs and could not possibly occur in today's market. Clearly and unequivocally, it continues to occur. Guys, you can presently receive a free share of Tesla or Google along with a $100 cash bonus by signing up for Moomoo through the link in the description and making the required deposits. If you only desire the $100 cash bonus and 5 free securities, you need only deposit $100. If you so desired, you could use the free cash reward and the free stock to purchase additional AMC or GameStop shares. And as a consequence, Peter Han tweeted, Sometimes I wish I could track down every single person on LinkedIn who told me I was delusional about naked shorting in July 2021. 
he said. What would that accomplish in the end? Because the opponents of naked shorting are liable to fall into any of the five categories below. You may approach someone who attacked him for discussing nude shorting, and the individual may respond, Yes, I did. I was bound by a contract with the short sellers. It is impersonal. I was merely paid to criticize you. Which brings me to a hilarious post by Mark Cottis. Now you may recall this video of a Morgan Stanley employee discussing how he used to synthetically short equities every day. Mark commented on the video by stating, This guy is full of crap for claiming that it doesn't work this way. He stated that he appears to contain more garbage than a Thanksgiving turkey. Moreover, he stated that brokers will not permit short selling without a borrow period. Given that the SEC has just sued a company for shorting equities without borrowing shares, Mark is either oblivious to how the stock market operates or he is a compensated short seller. Marcus, Charles Gasparino, Doug Sifu, Amy the Trader, and many others who oppose synthetic short selling and believe the ANC crush will not occur are evidently in the same camp as Marcus. Regarding Charles Gasparino, you may have noticed that he has recently become best friends with Mike the Marine, the same individual who opposes the ANC reverse split and believes that it will somehow eliminate the squeeze. I suspect that Mike believes this because he too is a compensated short seller. If Mike the Marine is now closest friends with Charles Gasparino and Mark Cottes, his allegiance is readily apparent. Spence, however, is an intriguing figure who appears to be altering their tune. He tweeted, I believe the eight transformation will generate massive, massive volatility. I anticipate that more synthetic short sellers will be charged in the future weeks and months, either by the SEC or the Department of Justice. Perhaps the SEC will charge lesser short sellers while leaving the larger ones to the Department of Justice. And perhaps in this manner, genuine criminal charges will be brought, as opposed to merely small fines. However, this enforcement action has ultimately convinced me that the SEC and the Department of Justice are indeed pursuing short sellers. I believe it is only a question of time before all short sellers are apprehended and incarcerated. And I'm certain that as more short sellers are apprehended, it will deter other short sellers from holding unlawful short positions, encouraging them to liquidate their shorts. They will ultimately choose the correct course of action because they must close out their illegal short positions or risk prison time. And undoubtedly, as more shorts close their short positions out of fear, the ANC and GameStop squeezes will occur. However, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. As usual, gentlemen, be sure to mark that notification bell so that you are notified whenever I upload a new video. Cheers!